We will start with a short review of uh, each uh, country, and I'm, I'm supposed to be the first in the list. I'm sorry about that, <laughs> getting bored about me, but... <laughs> Uh, I will start with a quick uh, history of the fishery. Uh, the Chilean uh, toothfish industry, as you know, uh, it's where here is uh, when all this fishery started. We goes back to the late 80s, uh, but it was in the 90s, early 90s, that the commercial fishery was uh, developed. Uh, this was uh, a lot of this. Uh, um, Development of in this industry was uh, started by the decrease in the quotas for Austral Hake uh, that make the longliner fleet to look for alternative species. But at that time we knew how to fish, but we didn't know how to sell the fish. So a lot of, together with developing the fishery, it was a lot of efforts done in the marketing side. And uh, on the early days, the, our main market was, was Japan. But then, uh, uh, shortly thereafter, moves to the U.S., and the Japanese market uh, is uh, lost uh, the importance for our product, not because they don't like the fish, because the price became too expensive for for this market, and they have uh, cheaper alternatives. Uh, <clears throat> so, in the in the mid 90s, the industrial fleet started to move to international waters looking for better fishing yields and they started catching in South Georgia and they started moving to more remote locations as far as the uh, Indian Ocean. Uh, unfortunately this movement and the uh, success of this fishery started created a lot of the IEU uh, fishing that, uh, that this industry saw later. Uh, in Chile, the only fishing uh, method allowed is long line, so there's no trolling here, there's no permitted by law. And, uh, and the other thing is important to know is that industrial vessels used the traditional Spanish system until 2006, 2007, where we switched to the trot line system uh, with the cachaloteras, as we know, uh, as a way to avoid the interaction of uh, marine mammals. Uh, the historical catches in Chile are shown here. Uh, you see it's a big pick on the 91, 92. And I'm showing two different curves here. One, the red one is the official country statistics. The, the blue one is uh, the one that is used uh, by IFOP uh, for the <coughs> because they corrected the statistics. Before 1997, I think, uh, when the BMS system was introduced, so what happened in the past is a big question mark because how much fish was caught here in Chile and how much caught fish was caught in international waters is a kind of a gray area. Uh, <coughs> Then uh, in Chile there are two, two different fishing zones. One is um, the fishing up north. Oh. Oh, one second, sorry. Uh, north, it, this is divided by the 47 uh, uh, parallel south. Uh, in the northern part of the country, uh, the, fish, the fishing is reserved for artisanal fishermen. We call artisanal fishermen here by law all vessels up to 18 meters long. And, um, and these are wet fish trawlers, of course. Until 2012, there was no tax and no TAC set for this area. And uh, later on, it was introduced uh, the TAC. I hope you can see the numbers because I can't see them here. But anyway, it uh, went to from 1,300 to now it's a bit uh, uh, 1,400. There are no ITQ system here, uh, so it is a, it is a big problem because it's an Olymp it's an Olympic system, 
and um, there are about uh, 120 vessels working there, but the problem is there is a potential universe of, uh, I don't know, 1,800 vessels that are registered to catch in this area. So they are, any, any day they may decide to go uh, fishing uh, and that will be a big problem. And they didn't have much control until a few years ago. Now they have a VMS and, uh, and certification of disembark. Uh, but this is, fortunately, is, is mostly due to uh, Camela CDS uh, system and the USA uh, market requirements. Uh, the catch of these vessels is uh, whitefish, goes to processing factories here, land-based uh, processing factories. Uh, they catch mo mostly fillets and portions. Uh, then from the 47 to the south, there is uh, our zone of operation. Um, there is uh, their ITQ's system here. These are sold in public tender every year. I mean, the license lasts 10 years, but every year you have to re we have to renew 10% of it. Um, the, the TAC used to be around 3,000 tons for many years until the new fishing law came in effect, and then uh, it was all of a sudden reduced uh, up to a little bit over 1,000 tons, or one-third of what used to be, and uh, now has increased a little bit. Now it's uh, 1.6 thousand tons this year. Um, <coughs> so now it is also uh, some of the artisanal vessels are allowed the, by, by the law up to get up to 30% of this uh, TAC. Also, they have also to participate in uh, public tenders. And this has been done in a, in a six year period. Um, the, industrial, uh, the industrial fishing the Albac members, we have uh, three companies, eight freezing long liners. Most of them are used uh, for other species as well. It's not only concentrated on toothfish. And um, so, as I said, BMS and uh, disembark uh, control is in effect since the late uh, um, 90s. Hmm? Uh, if you see the catch here in, uh, in, uh, in the Chilean EEC, this is divided by fleet. The red one is the artisanal, the blue one is the industrial, and the yellow one is, is the, or green one, is, um, is the total catch. It uh, came from a maximum of 7,000 uh, in the 2001, and now it's uh, is coming back to almost 3,000 or a little bit over. Then about the history of uh, depredation. Depredation is, is not a new problem for the industry, but has been uh, growing very fast and uh, becoming a major, major issue for us. In the northern area, uh, where the artisanal fishermen works, the main problem they have are with the sperm whales and uh, sea lions, while in the southern part, our, pro our main problem are killer and sperm whales. We found uh, reports of this issue as old as 1997, but earlier estimations said that it affected only two or three percent of the catch, so nobody took this problem uh, really seriously. It was uh, CEPES, who make a, um, <clears throat> a research fishing operations together with Albac in the, in uh, 2000, I think it started 2006, but by 2009 uh, they, they started to record the presence of uh, marine mammals and uh, at that time they estimated that the predation was around 10 to 15 percent of the catch. Since then, we have uh, recorded the interaction, and the data is included in the uh, the vessels logbooks, um, and uh, the scientific 
observers from IFOP started to include this information in their reports as well. Uh, but for the time being, nothing has been done with all this data collected. We already have it, but has not been uh, really used for anything, especially for the stock assessment and the TAC calculation. Uh, the captains of the vessel's experiences of the depredation today is at very least 30% uh, of the catch and most probably more than that. <clears throat> uh, so, uh, as I said before, this is a problem that is really serious for us and has to be uh, take, uh, addressed uh, urgently. Uh, I will not get too long, but depredation has several main issues, uh, socioeconomic, lost fishing time, extra fuel consumption, uh, ecological effects on the predating species, and uh, conservation issues which impact in the depredated resources. That the implication of the later can be economic with significant losses for fishers of the, on the management of the fish resources, uh, losses due to the depredation and not being accounted for in fish stock assessment and quota allocation process. And on the marine mammal species, there's a risk of mortality by entanglement, uh, modification of energy balance and things like that. Uh, so as a, as a mitigation, we have tried uh, many things. Um, I think my son will cover this issue late uh, this afternoon in more detail. But uh, I will tell you, we as a company declare, officially declared the war to killer whales a few years ago. And uh, I'm very proud to announce that we are losing the war. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, um, we have tried acoustic deterrent. Uh, one is uh, Orca Saber <clears throat> that we have uh, tried uh, several versions, uh, and this has not worked at all. Uh, we also develop our own uh, system we call SASDO. Uh, that this um, this uh, still is still under trials. Uh, <clears throat> we have uh, done a lot of efforts in 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 uh, fishing gear, as I said before. Uh, we developed the cachaloteras a few years ago, and the cachaloteras are on the trot lines, and cachaloteras are, has been effective against uh, sperm whales, but uh, so far completely useless with the killer whales. Uh, we are also working in a modified uh, cachalotera, well, we are trying to say it orca, orcatera now, but. <laughs> anyway, to, to try to avoid the operation with orcas. And, and the, the thing that has been proven more effectively is a fishing strategy done by the captains trying to avoid, um, <clears throat> avoid areas with too many whales or navigate to new areas and come back later to retrieve the year. <coughs> In the case of the data being recorded, uh, we use um, we, uh, the vessel keep a detailed uh, logbook uh, that goes to EFOP, who does the stock assessment, and Serna Pesca, who is enforcement agency. And uh, this is being done jointly by the scientific observer on board with the help of the crew. Uh, we register all kind of, uh, of uh, uh, catch information, uh, well, whatever position, number of hooks, and everything. And also biological information, length of fish, size, weight, sex, maturity, autolites. And, uh, and IFOP has a, a quite impressive uh, database of over 20 years of all these parameters. In the case of uh, marine mammals, this is something that I told you is about five or six year data we have. Uh, we are mainly registering presence yes or no, or of uh, which, uh, which uh, species, I mean, if we see killer whales or, or sperm whales, 
and how many at the time of setting the line and the time of retrieving the line. Uh, we also keep the uh, record of the number of fish beaten and uh, damage to the fishing lines. This is very basic information, but we already are building our database on that. Uh, <coughs> we are also, uh, in the case of our company, together with uh, IFOP, we are collecting this information in a, in a smaller scale. Uh, we will get back to that later on. Uh, so I don't want to bore you. This is a real, a real problem, and in our opinion, all these issues are really urgent and critical for the future of our industry. And until we have a better understanding of it, we will not know uh, for sure the real status of the resource, which is something very important for us. Uh, the management of the fishery has a limited knowledge, and uh, stock assessment is not considering this uh, phenomenon. Uh, I think that's it. And uh, we will we'll go ahead with our program. And we welcome Janet Robertson from the Falkland Islands. <laughs>